Pause for now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Khalil Doheny. I'm the Senior Content Marketing Manager at Digital Niche Agency. Today, we have a stacked team from, from Kirby Coffee team. How are you guys doing today? Doing fantastic. Awesome. Really well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, while we have people coming in from, from the audience, you know, just curious, where's everyone tuning in from? I'm currently in LA. It's, uh, you know, the weather can't make up its mind over the weekend during Christmas. It was 80 degrees and now just decided to be 50 degrees and, and raining. So, you know, it's it's a interesting holiday season, that's for sure. How about you guys? Where are you guys tuning in from? Well, I will say I don't want to give any, I mean, Chicago was like negative numbers. So, yeah. you know, you're talking about the rain and all of that. I'm not giving you anything there. <laughs> I know. I've heard, uh, you know, it's especially with travel. I have friends stuck in, in New York right now with, you know, with, with the weather being delayed and everything. So it's uh, definitely, I, you know, I, I, I apologize for, <laughs> for kind of running okay. a little bit. So good. No worries. No we're, worries. we're used to it. We're used to it by now. You know, we've accepted yeah, it since we all, yeah, I grew we're, up. We're all in the Chicago line area. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. But we're all feeling the same way. <laughs> 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 so good so good uh we love the change of weather yeah. yeah cool before we get started uh you know do want to kind of lay out what we're going to be discussing today um today you know this webinar is for you the audience for those who are you know our current investors also are potential investors um you know we want to get your questions answered we also want to tell you a little bit more of kirby coffee and you know what their you know what their mission is and just to kind of give you a little more information before we dive into that you know wanted to hand it to the team and kind of just go through quick introductions um abby if you want to kick it off with with a quick intro to yourself sure uh, hi, everybody. My name is Abby Brumfield. I'm currently the director of operations for Kirby Coffee. Uh, I've been with Kirby since May of 2021 when Jacques convinced me to move across the country from Arizona to Chicago. Uh, I work closely with Kirby and Jacques to see through the day-to-day -day operations of our storefronts, as well as working with several of our wholesale customers. And I come with about five years of experience at Dutch Bros Coffee as a barista and shift, shift supervisor. And I will pass it on to Kirby from here. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So my name is Kirby Isaac. I'm a senior level uh, program manager with almost 12 years experience in retail management. Um, I, I am currently the chief operating officer at Kribby. Um, started unofficially back in April, kind of uh, as a consultant and working through just operational needs, business organization, and uh, got brought onto the team um, in August. I will say that it's a very it's coincidental that my name is Kirby and the company is Kirby, but uh, super excited to work with this team and excited to tell you guys about, more about the uh, company. I'll shoot it over to Je uh, to Kyle. Sorry. Thanks, Kirby. My name is Kyle Abomri. I'm a representative of Kribi Coffee in Cameroon. Uh, I manage uh, Kribi Coffee operations here in Cameroon. Uh, I also manage our coffee farm, which uh, we train farmers on quality production, including planting coffee beans, maintenance, and uh, uh, repairing uh, farming equipment. I currently have 12 years experience in the coffee industry. And I'm very passionate uh, working with Kribi Coffee because it's an exciting company. Thank you. I'll pass it over to Jeremy. Hello, everyone. I am Jeremiah Shalow. I'm Jacques Shalow, founder's son. Um, I am a co-owner of Kribi Coffee, um, the creative director, and um, the brand strategist. So figuring out like the best partners that would work with us on our mission. Um, and then in terms of design and creative direction, I work with like figuring out the photography, the, um, the whole visual look, all the packaging for Kribi, um, incorporating like our Cameroonian roots and like the patterns that we have for the branding. Um, I've had about like 10 or so years in the creative industry just as um, graphic designer and illustrator and artist. And yeah, excited to talk more about everything and pass it on to Jacques Chalot. Thank you so much. Um, I am Jacques Chalot. I'm the uh, founder and CEO, or one of the founders and CEO of uh, Kribi Coffee Company. Um, the brand name is actually Kribi Coffee Air Roastery, um, and the corporate name is Kribi Coffee Company. 
um, many, many years um, in the industry in sales executive, um, but got inspired in 2013 to get back into coffee. And um, the ride has been phenomenal. Um, and we'll tell you more about what's been going on and you'll see a little bit more of my background as we do so. Um, so I'm really thrilled, thrilled to, um, to, to be here. And I thank everybody that's participating, taking valuable time out of a very busy day and busy uh, uh, holiday season to come listen to our vision and ask questions uh, regarding our investments that we're in the process of putting in place. Exactly. And that's what the purpose of the webinar today is to, to learn more about the mission behind the brand, behind Creamy Coffee, and, and as well as the investment opportunity, because uh, it is a wonderful opportunity for, for everyone, you know, who's who is attending today and for those who are going you know, to be watching the recap down the line. Um, I am going to be sending the, the Start Engine, you know, link here below. So if you want to learn more about, about Creamy after this event, please click that, that link, click that heart button on Start Engine and stay up to date with, with everything Creepy Coffee. Um, with that being said, Jock, I'll pass it back to you. I know you have a uh, presentation lined up that you wanted to show today. Absolutely. So I will launch this and um, go back and share my screen. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yes. To go. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, welcome again, and uh, thank you all for being here. Um, as I indicated before, my name is Jack Shallow, I'm the CEO of Creepy Coffee Air Roastery. So um, the 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 problem that we solve um, has to do with. Uh, obviously, we're in the coffee business, uh, but there's an intense market competition that's been going on um, and price volatility and climatic conditions that are really creating havoc for small farmers. Um, the farming side of the coffee business has been heavily, heavily marginalized and the farmers get, they get squeezed down and down with lower margins and they're the least um, uh, well, one of the least groups that is actually making not as much money. Um, so we are solving this problem uh, by bringing a number of farmers together in the home in our home country of Cameroon. Now we source green coffee from many places around the world, um, but we are focusing our initial effort in Cameroon and have consolidated and are working through Kyle, um, who is managing our, our effort from Cameroon. Um, to bring these farmers together and we're sourcing the green beans directly from them. Now, how, what credibility do I have? Well, I was born and raised in a coffee farm back in Cameroon. We still own 500 acres of land. And last year we actually started planting and we'll be harvesting the first crop from this farm under my watch sometime in 2024. Um, so I understand the marginalization of farmers and we believe that our solution um, will help make an impact to these farmers uh, based on our plans. So to put this in perspective, um, you need to understand the entire value chain of coffee, right? So if you look from the farmers to the traders, to the shippers, to roasters, and then the retailers, you see that the lion's share of, of, of the dollars is, is in the hands of the roasters. Now, we've solved um, the farming side um, by working closely with Kyle in Cameroon in sourcing the green beans and managing the supply chain all the way to the coffee getting to us. So we're able to, from the savings of that, give back to the farmers more for the coffee that we, uh, we, we, we import from them. The second area is obviously the roaster. You can see that the roasters have the lion's share in the value chain of coffee. Why is that? Well. If you think about it, this is the group that is using technology to convert a raw material. See, coffee that comes from the farm um, is sort of bland. It doesn't taste. Um, and coffee is a very, very complex product. The application of heat to the coffee results in 200 plus chemical compound changes. It's a very complex product. So 
this process of roasting unlocks all the essence and the beauty and aroma of coffee. And so this group is working with raw material and therefore they have the ability to control the pricing and how they're getting in the market. And if you both roasting and retailing, i.e. to a coffee shop, um, you are actually at 82% of the market. So there's no secret in what we're doing. Um, we are managing the farm and are heavily involved in the roasting sector working with a larger portion of the margin, and therefore that allows us to be able to offer the farmers uh, a lot more for the coffee we purchase from them. So I talked about the two problems that we're solving, one at the farm level, um, the second is in this area of roasting, where um, uh, I wanted to go on to the next um, uh, slide here. So what we uncovered in the whole roasting process is that there are two fundamental roasting processes. One, the one to my right, your left, uh, the gas drum roasting process um, is the prevailing process. 90% of the coffee consumed in the world today is consumed uh, or is roasted through this process. Uh, now, there's nothing potentially wrong with this process and we're not here to debate whether the process we're using is better than gas drum roasting, but we believe from our research that there's some issues in the gas drum roasting uh, 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 process. The first is that if you look at most of the coffee companies today, they're roasting from a central location and then packaging and then distributing to the end consumers. Now, if you take a step back, technically coffee is still in 14 days. This is not me saying, so this is a scientific uh, fact. It gets oxidized and it gets stale. It's still a very stable product. So you can extend the life as much as you can. It still tastes like coffee. Your big companies that have been doing this for a long time, Forgers, uh, Sanka, and all those companies would not only roast, they would grind the coffee, exposing the surface area even more to oxidation, packaging it in a canister. And today, 20% of the population are still consuming that type of coffee that is really not very good coffee, but it's out there. It's a very stable product. You know you're consuming coffee, but you taste freshly roasted coffee, you can tell the difference. So that's the first challenge we see in this gas drum roasting process is that they're roasting large quantities and then have to distribute. The second challenge is that the gas roast roasting process basically is, is using gas flame to conduct heat to a drum that is rolling around and then you have the green coffee that is in the drum. The heat from the drum is, conducting, is conducted to the beans and then it's roasting. The byproduct of this roasting process stays in the drum. Now, it's a, it's a big debate. The, the charred chaff, because the texture is lighter, can be managed in a lot of different ways. And we believe that the charred chaff is influencing the taste of the coffee in a way that it should not be. If you want your coffee bitter and or roasted dark, it's temperature and time and you should do it that way, not have it be uh, influenced by a byproduct. We, through a number of research, um, came about a patented technology that we acquired and I managed that company for four years the patent is not held to be cleared by Kribi Coffee, it's held by Java Master. Um, we can come back through QA and I can provide more details around that. But this process basically is air roasting, which means that we're using force hot air to levitate the coffee in a roast chamber, and the heat is being applied convectionally to the beans. It's a more uniformly roasted coffee, it tastes better and cleaner. Um, and don't take my word for it, order some for yourself and then you be the judge of that. Now, so the first problem is solved by roasting small batches, right? So we roast one to five pounds in less than 10 minutes. Now I pointed out earlier that the roasted coffee has a freshness window of 14 days. The green coffee can last more than two years and if you preserve it properly. So why would you want to roast any more than you need within a certain period of time? 
So the vision we have for Kribi Coffee is to install these eco-friendly electric roasters in the store front and center, make it an experiential play where you see the coffee roasted right in front of you. Um, we have used the full sweat air to levitate the beans. So it's again, conventionally heated, much cleaner taste. And so it's, again, don't take my word for it, um, taste the coffee for yourself. So we solve the problem of mass distribution by roasting closer to the point of consumption. We have two coffee shops right now, and that's what we're doing at these locations. The, uh, obviously, since we're roasting small batches, um, it's consumed right within the community, no issues. But the second challenge of the charred chaff, basically we have a cyclone that is functioning within the system that is exhausting the, charred, the, the, the chaff during the roasting process. So we're eliminating the byproduct during the roasting process. You then end up with a completely different taste. So I apologize that I had to go through these details, but this is in essence, some of the differentiating factors of what we're doing. What I just described to you, however, it's a lot of talk. We were very fortunate to have been introduced to Zev Siegel, one of the original founders of Starbucks, who after a year became um, a pro bono advisor to the company. And the first advice that Zev gave to me was, Jacques, stop talking about the technology. Nobody cares about the technology. Well, he, he had a point. And, he, and his point was, get into the coffee shop business. You need to have a coffee shop. You need consumers to come in and taste the coffee and let them tell the difference and let them help you tell the world what the difference is. And that's what we did. We acquired an underperforming coffee shop in the neighborhood that was doing $9,000 a month in revenue. We transformed it with the roaster. And today that's doing $60,000 in revenue. So the vision that we have is to have these roasters in the coffee shop, roasting live and having customers experience it taste it and, and smell it in, in the process. Um, and that's what we've got um, uh, in two stores so far. So if you take a step back, let's be clear about the market that we're going after, right? So the serviceable, obtainable market data that we have here shows that the industry is 118 billion, um, driven mostly by the millennials um, that are consuming 44% of the coffee in the US. Again, just to take a step back and recap, we're using an eco-friendly process to roast the coffee and we're pervading this through an omni-channel strategy. Granted, we're also working with farmers to make sure that they, they, they're not marginalized. Um, so our business model today um, started out with the coffee, two coffee shops that I've indicated, right? So in the bottom, you've got the retail and the store, and we intend to do a food truck with a roaster in it. Um, then we actually have an e-commerce, we have an app. Um, so that's the second uh, method. But what happened um, just by word of mouth is that many individuals of other coffee shops, um, a few grocery stores would come in and taste their coffee, some upscale restaurants, and they ask us if we can roast for them. So we actually, by word of mouth, built um, a wholesale business, um, roughly just about one over one third of our revenue in 2021 was from wholesale. So that's the, our go to market strategy. And if I go back to the retail, our vision is to have a limited number of corporate owned stores for branding and for um, uh, uh, getting the word out. And then we envision that we'll be iterating that into a franchise operation, which, um, you know, if there are any questions, um, Kirby, who's been spearheading that, can respond to a bit more uh, during Q&A. So just to take a snapshot then, our revenue for 2021 is actual was 1.1 million and is published in, our, in the, the crowdfunding um, data uh, portal. Um, our current estimated run rate to close the year is 1.4 today. So this is a real data. Um, and um, again, it's, you know, the team we've introduced, um, just about everybody that's on here, 
Um, the only person that's not with us is Amir, who's managing our warehouse, and uh, Casey, who's a resident consultant um, with lots of experience from um, Starbucks and is advising us behind the scene, as well as Zev Ziegel as an advisor. So let's not make a mistake. We are very, very aware that this is a crowded space. Um, and this quadrant is not meant to represent all the uh, competitors we have out there, but it will give you a sense of some big players out there, right? So we are aware of that. But we believe that with the different shading factors around the way we source our beans and the way we roast it, and I might add many other social impact um, initiatives that we're blending into what we're doing, we believe that we can indeed compete in this very crowded market space and we play in the top right quadrant um, of, 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 uh, of the space. So with that, um, that's, that's it. So I suppose we will turn it back over to Khalil and, and then um, we'll get into a Q&A session. Awesome. Um, all right. Thank you, Jacques, for, for that wonderful presentation. Um, you know, before we jump into the q and I'm curious from anyone else on the team, is there anything you guys wanted to add, um, you know, along the size of the, the presentation? Um, I could, I uh, guess, go into a little bit more about the franchise uh, program that Jacques has mentioned. So, um, like you mentioned, we're looking to, uh, as far as corporate locations, we're looking to have around five stores. Um, and the goal with that is just obviously with retail that, that that takes a lot and ultimately we want to be able to offer our product across the country so um, i've been working with a franchise consulting firm that will help get us uh, through past the regulatory processes uh, to be able to operate in in majority of states um, we are going to be strategic about the states that we start to open up the opportunities with but ultimately, by the end of uh, Q1, beginning of Q2, we'll be able to start offering that. And we have uh, quite a few uh, potential um, people that are looking to open up franchises here shortly. So, um, so again, if there's any specific questions surrounding that, then we can let you know. But um, ultimately, that goal is going to be by the end of Q2, we'll be able to start offering some franchises as well. I was on mute there. Uh, awesome, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, we're we're gonna take this time to to open you know the floor for for any questions. So if you do have a question, please drop them in the box below. You know this webinar is for you, whoever is attending today. You know we want to make sure you know you're getting your questions answered. So if you do have a question, please leave it in the chat box. We do have some questions already coming in. What would you say to investors who are on the fence about investing? <laughs> Well, um, I, you know, I, I would say um, be specific about what concerns you have and we can address it, but um, I would leave you with uh, an appreciation for what we've accomplished over a very short period of time in three years to look at some of the points that I made about how we're differentiating ourselves. Uh, and then most especially look at how we are socially impacting the world, right? So we will be very profitable. We will show a good return in, in investment, but at the end of the day, we feel good that we're contributing to society. We're continue contributing to humanity by looking after um, the farmers in a way that does not leave them marginalized. And perhaps I can touch on some of the social impact um, activities that we're doing right here um, in, in, in the US, right? So um, the shirt that I'm wearing, um, is, is, is actually a shirt derived from our uh, Black Lives Matter blend. Um, during the George Floyd uh, situation a few years back, uh, Jeremiah, credit to him, said, look, we, that we need to do something about this. What, what, what statement can we make? Well, we, um, the, 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 he, he, he researched and designed this sh shirt, which we then use in the Black Lives Matter blend um, uh, design patterns. Uh, thank you for showing that. Um, and, and and it's fascinating, right? So uh, the, 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 this this mask is a mask from my village, the Bamileke tribe mask, which is celebrated all over Africa. Uh, so Jeremiah did the research and he used this as the mark to 
take a position for the marginalization of people of color. We, 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 we created a blend, Amir, our resident um, uh, guru, coffee guru, created a, a blend, which we've been selling at $20, a 12 ounce bag and contributing a portion to Tutoring Chicago, which is a local uh, organization tutoring kids in the west side of Chicago and underprivileged um, uh, areas from middle school to the university. Um, we have done several other things along this line. Our Love is Love blend um, is, is contributing to a group called Halstead that is looking after the LGBTQ community. So I say to you, if you sit in on a fence, um, you know, I, I can't give you any data on how successful um, we're going to be with your investment because, you know, I, I just can't do that. Um, but I can say to you that we are going to be successful. This is the time to join us and to help us uh, get the impact of what we're doing to proliferate beyond the U.S. We see ourselves as a global company, uh, but we're being modest because we only have limited capital and we're gonna build it slowly over time. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> jump off the fence now, jump on our side. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you know, what is the company's biggest challenge and how will Creamy Coffee overcome those challenges? Um, I see the, 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 the two primary challenges right now is, is expanding our team, right? Because it's all about, it's not about me, it's not about just the vision. We have a good brand, thanks to, uh, to Jeremiah, um, but we need to build a solid team. And to do that, we need capital to do that. So that's the first uh, uh, challenge that we wanna overcome with, with, with some capital. The second is to maintain um, the, uh, the, the supply chain, right? So to do more at the farm level. So right now, um, and Kyle might be able to speak to this more, um, we're working closely with the farmers, but we wanna work closer with them. It, it's a challenge, especially in Cameroon, because um, we have some places that we can't quite get to. Um, so we hope to overcome that over time by putting a lot better infrastructure in place and expanding uh, Kyle's team. Again, both challenges um, cannot all be fixed by dollars, but the majority can be fixed with some dollars. Um, I would say those are the two primary uh, challenges that we face that we believe we can overcome, um, both with some share uh, access to good people as well as capital. Awesome. And quickly, I know we're starting to get some questions that are talking about, you know, future projections, use of proceeds. Uh, unfortunately, due to SEC guidelines, we can't discuss uh, those type of questions here on this live event. But if you do want to learn more about them, please visit the Start Engine page or send a message directly to Jock. You'd be more than happy to, to give you that information. But due to the, to the guidelines, we can't talk about it here in a public forum. Um, other than the technology, what sets you apart from, from other coffee shops? Wow. Uh, um, we really can't live out the technology, right? But, but, I, but, 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 but I would say that um, we have, looking at what we've done in this community, we've created, I believe, a different way to present coffee. And it's not, we, if you look at our Facebook and our social media uh, comments from a lot of customers, um, somehow we've managed as a team to convey to the baristas how important our customers are. And the way we treat them, the way we, I mean, the simple hello when anybody walks in the door, um, I, I believe that the culture that we've created around the technology, our social impact and all the other things that we do that are great differentiations, but I believe that the way we pull that together and are delivering it to customer is to customers. It represents to me a, a very unique um, set of values that 
uh, is driving what we're doing. Um, we get this feedback a lot from customers, so I'm not just speaking out of uh, out of context uh, here. So uh, I mean, again, the technology, the social impact, the farm, and all these different things. Um, and, and and besides, a lot of these customers tell us the coffee is great. <laughs> um, but but the, again, it's all subjective, you know. So uh, but the culture is mm -hmm. we believe is a key differentiation for uh, everything that we've been doing so far. And we have put in place measures that will maintain this um, as we scale. Yeah, and one thing I really, you know, found interesting that you mentioned earlier is, you know, having one of the co-founders of, of Starbucks being, you know, as, as your advisor. Could you speak a little bit more uh, about that, that partnership and, you know, how that's been beneficial for, for Kirby Coffee? Yes, um, this is this is fantastic. A lot of what I've just mentioned to you guys, honestly, I don't want to take credit for. Uh, I pointed out that, uh, so, so let me go back a little bit. Um, I was introduced to Zev um, around um, November of 2017. He did not respond to me until November of 2018. So it took him a year. Um, and, you know, I just kept sending him emails and texts and, you know, leaving him voicemails about what we're doing. Um, and he finally just responded out of the blue in, you know, in November 2018 and said, look, I apologize that, you know, I've seen your, uh, your, 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 your text and your communications, but I travel a lot. I'm in different places around the world, speaking events. But I do visit coffee shops and I've been thinking about what you're doing and I, you know, I'm in the business. So I, I, at the same time, you know, I needed to learn a little bit more about the air roasting process and technology. So I have and I need to talk more about it. So we spent a couple of weeks in meetings talking about it. And he concluded that he, he, he said, look, I think you've got something here. Um, and um, I'll give you an hour per week. We can, you know, just talk about what you're doing and I can guide you through a few things. Um, and um, uh, that's what happened for a couple of months and we've become quite close. He actually flew to Chicago um, um, around Christmas of, uh, of, uh, Christmas of 2018, um, spent some time with us, looked at the shop and um, uh, we drove together to Michigan to, to visit the, the manufacturing plant for the roasters. Um, and, and his first advice to me was, again, as I mentioned during my presentation, the technology is great, but you need to communicate this to consumers. They need to guide what you're doing and tell the story. So that's the relationship um, to that point. We've become quite close since then. And we've gone from an hour a week to um, he's available anytime I, want to talk to him by texting he makes time we get on a call and i keep him up to date about everything we're doing and um, he gives me feedback and guidance and there's been many other things that he's actually provided guidance around the most prominent that i'm going to leave you with is that the coffee shop that we acquired was actually called uh counter coffee and um we operated that way for quite some time and um, we thought, okay, this concept is solid. It's going somewhere. We need to rebrand it. Jeremiah stepped up and says, I've got this one. I, got, I know exactly what the vision, uh, the, what the design need to look like. And, and he, you know, there's a lot more detail to that. But um, uh, so he got that part and was like, okay, what name are we going to come up with for this coffee company? And we talk to different people, advisors and all that. So I got a call one day from Zev says, hey, you know, you're struggling with this concept. You always tell them some sayings back in, 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 our, in, in, in Africa. My grandmother would always say to me, hey, you know, your, your nose is the closest thing to your face, but you can't see it, right? And, and so he picked up on that and said, you know, there's, some, there's a name that, you always tell me this, that your grandmother always say, there's a name that's very close to you that you can't see. It. Perhaps I should be the one to tell you. I said, what is that? This is Creedy. So this company, <laughs> the idea came from him. I said, what, Creedy? Like in Creedy in Cameroon, it's a port city. Um, you know, it, what's the relevance? We don't grow coffee in, in Creedy. 
He says, oh, no, but wait. It will not be fair if you name the coffee company based on the coffee region you come from, the Oku region in the Northwest, the Banso region or the West. I mean, it just is not fair for any one of those groups. You should name it based on a port city where the coffee is actually gonna go through, hopefully, to the rest of the world. I said, well, there's Limbe, there's Douala, there's, you know, there's no, 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 it's Creepy Sounds Good, it's the future of ports, and it's it's uh, it's a resort town, It and that's how we came up with Creepy Coffee. <laughs> so anyway, so a long story uh, about the relationship with Zev, it's been extremely um, helpful to us, available, and has, uh, um, has been very, very uh, magnanimous in contributing his time to uh, helping us attain our vision. Awesome. We are getting a couple questions around franchising. Um, where do you, you know, plan on looking to expand? And will these shops offer drive-through options? And one part, one more part of it is, you know, what are some steps in order to become a franchisee? So, um, and 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 Kirby, feel free to jump in as I used to. So, the first portion of your question is. Um, um, excuse me, <laughs> I'm blanking out. So the first portion of the question was how we go about the getting the franchise together, um, and and so we so um, we we hired the, the the process is really tedious um, for compliance and regulatory um, uh, reasons. We we want to focus right, so we can't be in every state. Uh, and this was part of the logic of hiring a consulting company that has been doing this for a long time. So they've recommended uh, some states and um, Kirby can speak specifically about those states. We, we're likely gonna start here in Illinois and then there's some strategic states that we need to based on um, the state laws, right? But eventually um, we intend to uh, be national and potentially global as well. Um, I think that was the first portion of the the, the, the first portion of the question. Um, the second portion, um, how do we go about? So part of why I'm excited about the consulting firm that we hired is that they have a sales team that is experienced in qualifying franchise potential franchisees. This is a critical aspect of what we're doing because. There are two main problems when you franchise, right? There's a potential brand bastardization. And then that is people use the brand in different ways and they go want to do things. And then secondly, um, uh, being able to manage, keeping an eye on them for the same reason, for the very first reason, right? So um, not only is this company, is, this, this consulting company has provided us with some guidance um, on how to do so, we have had to be very careful because uh, we have a lot of very well-crafted stories. And what I pointed out before about the culture that we believe will differentiate us, we have to be very careful. So they're going to have us help us vet these franchisees. Um, and so the process would be, frankly speaking, just reach out to us, reach out to myself or Kirby, and we can walk you through and give you more details about the process. Most of the data uh, and, and the uh, information that we need to put together is, is in place. We've got the portal. And so that's why we anticipate that um, sometime by the end of the first quarter, we should be able to uh, start offering that. I hope that I answered your questions. And is there a timeline or a plan to push into large retailers for you know roasted coffee, K-cups, et cetera? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's amazing you mentioned K Cops. Um, so, so, uh, and I'll come back to that. Uh, is there timing for that? Well, we, we're a small company, right? You know, there are 30 people. Um, we can spread ourselves and do all kinds of wonderful things. We want to be measured. We want to end up managing a business as methodically as we possibly can. So, we can't be doing everything. But we have initiated conversations with Costco and some big. Uh, box entities. We understand what the requirement is. They understand the value we bring, and we know we can get in there, right? So 
we've, we've put that aside and we will come back with some capital and, and, and complete the requirements to be able to go do that. But in the meantime, we wanted to start testing how we get into stores. So our local grocery store, Sugar Beet, we've been in there for about a year and a half too, and it's doing extremely well. We've taken that one step further. Um, we had a gentleman to his credit that uh, worked with us prior and is no longer with us, but he got us into um, Caputos, which is 15 loca uh, seven locations uh, in the uh, Chicago land area. Um, Sunset Foods up in the north. Um, so we are in 15 locations, 15 grocery stores today, including Sugar Beet 18, uh, excuse me, 16, um, operated by Sugar Beet, Sunset Foods, and Caputos. Again, for what we do and how we are approaching it, we think this is the best way to slowly build on this as we raise capital. But now um, that we are we're at this point, we can indeed pull together, as I indicated before, a team that can be more proactive in getting out and expanding this and having us uh, address some of the requirements and, and expanding to big, you know, big box uh, uh, retail stores. Jacques, did you want to also speak on K-Pods? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So we, we see bringing the technology, uh, bringing the product to market on the specific uh, platforms, right? So K-Cops is one of them. And um, while we and thought, K sorry, did somebody say something? So while we think the K-Cop market was, has been growing, uh, which was roughly about 20 to 25% prior to the pandemic, IRI is a major data providing company in the food and beverage sector. Their data shows that the KCOP single serve market has been growing up to 40, 41% during the pandemic is that kind of, so it's gone from 25 to 41%. So the that amount of coffee has been consumed based on single serve KCOPs and other single serve technologies. We, so the, the challenge with the way coffee is presented in KCOPs today, it's all a heat sealing process, okay? Not to be too technical again, in other words, the coffee is in the is in the capsule, and there's a whole process to heat seal the 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 the, 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 the capsule. That's the way everybody now coffee breeds. When you roast coffee and you grind it, there's it, it a there's a gas that 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 is, is it needs to be degassed, right? So if you roast, grind, and package, and you seal that cup and that coffee is still fresh, it will breathe. So what's going to happen? That cup is going to pop. So that's why K-Cops appears to be synonymous with bad coffee. But it's growing so fast because of the convenience. You know, you want a cup of coffee, you don't want to brew a whole pot. So you just, you know, punch it, take your cup and off you go. So this, that's why it's growing so fast. But people are consuming bad coffee. So we, in my previous tenure at the technology company, we work with a Chinese company that has a different process to seal these caps using pressure. So the pressure caps have a valve, uh, has a, a, a sealant that serves as a one-way valve. So the coffee can breathe over time and therefore you end up consuming fresh coffee. You roast, you grind, you package um, within days and you can distributed and consumers are tasting fresh coffee. So we've been testing this for the last three, four years, uh, my previous company, and then now uh, we created this, uh, this the, the, the package for it here. Um, consumers can tell the difference. So we see scaling this as one method of delivering the coffee besides in the 12 ounce bags. Um, we see this as part of our retail strategy is to get one of these machines at every one of our franchise and or corporate locations so we can actually make the fresh the package kickoffs on site for freshness in line with our entire value proposition awesome that was a, a great response uh do want to talk a little bit more about the the crowdfunding campaign you know why did you decide to go through equity crowdfunding rather than a traditional vc route <laughs> Well, if, if any of you have been down the VC route, uh, it's brutal. 
um, and and it's even more brutal for a small minority company. Uh, and um, uh, so so uh, while we have, frankly speaking, turned down one VC company, and we've actually been funded by a small um, minority VC company called Capitalized VC right here in Chicago, um, we've opted not to go more deeply in that route. Um, it's, it's gruesome, it's challenging, and the requirements are, are, are significant. We opted for the crowdfunding because um, it just made sense. Um, the regulatory process to get there is, is, is equally as stringent in terms of due diligence, because now we're selling shares to the public and uh, the SEC requirements are just, it's again, equally brutal, but, but, we, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a snapshot of the work you need to do to be able to start doing that. Once you do that, we felt that um, going after small investors for a small company and a minority company, um, this was the best option for us to raise the capital that we need to scale. Now, at some point, you know, I'm sure that we may have to um, go the VC route if we need to raise more capital, but at least we'll be in a position where we can dictate the terms, <laughs> we hope. Um, and so, so that's the logic of starting with the crowdfunding. Um, frankly speaking, we do not envision, again, I don't wanna give you forward thinking uh, plans, but we envision that our capital raising may get capped at some point. Um, we, 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 we believe that we have a structure in place that may self-fund um, what we're doing going forward. Again, I don't say we'll never do it, but um, at this stage, we envision that this crowdfunding gives us much more leverage to raise the capital we need to get to the next step. What about any partnerships? Are there any other significant partnerships that you think will take Kirby to the to the next level? Yes, um, we we've uh, we've had several conversations with um, a number of um, uh, companies, some of which I, I can't mention uh, here, but we we believe that uh, partnerships is is going to be a major portion of our, of, of of scaling the company. Um, we are we just got invited. There's there's one VC company that has two um, uh, two portions of their program. One of them is is a pool of uh, products and or services that they expose to larger companies if it, they think you're unique enough. Well, they've done through their due diligence and they believe we're unique and we're part of that pool. And the beginning of uh, 2023, they'll be making introductions to many large organizations. So um, you, you name them, they're public, Nestle, Starbucks, and all, the, all of them out there, they do need um, small companies and unique products and or services on some, com some small companies, we believe we have that. And we think that through that, we'll be able to make, um, to, to put together more partnership with some larger entities to help us scale um, the company. Awesome. And someone's asking to, to clarify a little bit more about the roasting process. Is the roasting process proprietary to Kirby? Uh, the roasting process is, it's, we have an exclusive um, for the Midwest, uh, but uh, to, 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 to answer that more directly, the IP that is associated with this roasters is held by a company called Java Master International LLC. I founded Java Master International LLC in 2016. The next generation of these roasters were, was designed and patented under my watch. Um, and, um, but the patent is held by Java Master International LLC. Kribi Coffee has the exclusive right to exploit this technology in the central region. Can we do this in other places around the country, globally? Of course we can, but again, we're a small company. We gotta, you know, manage what we can contain with capital and then we can grow from there. We don't see that as an issue. Um, I, I am very close to the, the, the group of investors that acquired my shares. The investors, the other investors that have stayed on are investors that 
I brought on board that have people in the neighborhood here uh, that know me. So if there's ever any question or issue about um, bringing in more of that technology for what we're doing, I don't really see that as an issue, uh, but that's the distinction. The proprietary nature of the IP is in Java Master, the proprietary nature of the exclusive VT to exploit it in the central region rests with Kribi Coffee Company. Awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, with kind of just in a more in a broad sense, what is your current roadmap for, for 2023? Uh, our current roadmap for 2023. Um, so um, without looking at the, the, the forecast, uh, basically we, we intend to have a total of three locations. We have two retail locations today. Um, they have not actually They've not picked what we believe the maximum revenue um, uh, will be when they peak. The first one that we had um, uh, in, in Forest Park has been around, it was the first one. Um, it's going into year three, well, year two in terms of full branding. Um, and the revenue from that location I've already spelled out to you. We've, it's a thousand, it's a, uh, a thousand square foot in the first floor. And we've just renovated the basement, which is another 1400. We intend to have um, activities, events, and other things happening there. So this location with that is going to go far beyond 60,000. We see this going higher. Again, I'm not going to project the number, but, but we see 2023 be a year where we focus on increasing the revenue there. The second location has been up for 60 days, just about, just over 60 days. And we are tracking well over our expected revenue at this location. It's a small location. It's a grab and go, a couple of seats, um, uh, but but it's right across from, from the train. And we see this targeting the neighborhood. You know, you don't need, all of a sudden, after we've gone through this, um, we were finding out that people want to come sit, of course. But um, we, we see this beginning to be profitable it's probably sometime in the middle of next year. So that's the plan for 23 and three is to focus on these two, get them up to par and get them to be very, very profitable. We have an opportunity for a third location, which will have a lot of seating that I can't talk about too much right now. Also in Oak Park, we're very excited about this location because it provides um, a few other strategic uh, 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 values that we needed to put in place to solidify our 2023 um, uh, uh, goals. So before the, our current revenue at the current location, have a third location, we may venture into, again, a food truck with a roaster, mostly for brand building, so we can go around the city of Chicago and do the same thing in different places. Outside of that, and uh, frankly speaking, I don't see that happening to 2024, maybe 2020, end of 2023, but 2023, solidify the two locations, get the third location up and get our sales team in place to increase revenue in sales of wholesale, getting into big box and other grocery stores. So that's what we see in our 2023 is hunker down, increase revenue, get profitable, and then look at 2024 and plan for more scaling. Awesome. With about five minutes left in today's event, I was curious, you know, coming from you guys, what is what would you say are the top reasons to invest in, in Kribi Coffee? Wow. <laughs> I, I think uh, by memory, they, they're actually listed on the portal, but to help me out here, guys, um, I, I, I would say that, uh, the you know, one is the differentiation of our technology that is driven by what customers have said to us about the taste. And again, this is not a debate about drum roasting is better than air roasting or air roasting is better. And we believe that the approach is different and consumers are telling us that it is. Uh, we believe that's a differentiation. Um, we believe that the fact that we're sourcing directly from farms and uh, socially impacting uh, the most marginalized group within the value chain um, is a key reason to invest with us. Uh, we also believe that the social impact, not just at the farm level, that we have the ability 
to um, to, to to bring to 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 our communities here in the U.S. Um, is a strong reason. And finally, and again, I can't speak to it, uh, but you know, it's kind of about profitability. And then what comes with profitability? You know, you share it with investors. Um, so, so, so we, we, we believe that this is going to be that aspect of a good return on investment somewhere there in the future as we, we do what we're doing. It, uh, um, just, we just can't speak to it in more detail um, in this forum, as, as Khalil has mentioned. So I would say those are the reasons. Any, anything else to add, guys? Did I miss something? Yeah, I think just like kind of this is a little bit of what you've been saying and stuff like that is I believe what like gets us excited and what gets other investors excited is just like the beginning is the technology. And that's how we get our like the word out about like, you know, the freshness and everything like that. No other big company is using air roasting right now. It's very exclusive to us, like as a majority. Um, and people haven't heard of it. It's curious. It pulls people in. And when they hear about the air roasting technology, that leads us to telling the stories behind like where we're from, like our social justice movements and things that we support like that. Um, and then it causes wholesalers to want to use our air roasted like uh, coffees, either to white label it, private label it. Um, and I, that's like going to be, I think, a huge part of our future sales is the wholesale because the technology is so good at making such fresh coffee, like you can taste it, like the difference and everything that these wholesalers want a part of it. And they're coming to us to do private labels so then they can, you know, present it as like, you know, their only product and stuff like that. And we'll be fueling that because like we're one of the only people that does it. Um, and then th there's just like so many components like that, that I believe wholesale and then like private labeling will be like a huge portion of what will get us um, to the top. Um, cool. And what better time to get in than on the ground floor? So like, I mean, we've, we've talked about a lot of the different things that we were bringing in different differentiators, but ultimately um, we really have a great product and um, yeah, we're really excited to be able to bring it to the community. Exactly. And I added that start engine link once yep. again in the chat box i highly recommend to go check out that that link and on start engine there is a little heart button on the top right hand corner click that heart button stay connected with everything creepy is, is doing we do post we, weekly portal updates so if you are ever curious on what the company's been up to highly recommend check out that that update section um, with that being said, are there any, you know, last, you know, final words we wanted to give the audience today before we sign out today? Please go to Start Engine, and we look forward to um, you making a conclusive decision to join our team to scale this method of roasting and um, and, and social impact, uh, making a change in the world. And uh, we we welcome as many people as can join our vision. Jock, is there any, you know, is there an email address or somewhere, you know, someone could reach out to if you, if you have, if they have any more yeah, questions? Yes, on our website, info at uh, creepycoffee.com, uh, you can reach Gabby and myself. Uh, my email address is Jacques, as in the first, you know, Jacques Cousteau, if you guys know, J-A-C-Q-U-E-S um, at creepycoffee.com. That simple. Don't miss the S. <laughs> <laughs> silent uh, but it's Jacques so Jacques at creepycoffee.com email works and um, you know when if I when I respond to you you'll be able to pick up my my cell number tax works um, email phone calls um, I'm, I'm available awesome well thank you everyone hope everyone has a great new year and you know excited you know stay tuned we do have another webinar next month so we'll be on the lookout for, for that invite and yeah, it was a wonderful time being here with everyone. Hope everyone has a great day. Great. Galil, thank you so much. Appreciate well, it. Team, we'll right. talk soon. All right. Yeah. Thanks again, everybody. Yeah, thank you for joining everyone. We really thank appreciate it. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you all for joining. Mm -hmm.